Until last April, there was a peace process, uh, a negotiation process between the Turkish state uh, and the Kurdish movement. Um, there were meetings at Imrala prison with the Kurdish leader Öcalan. Uh, there were meetings uh, in Kandil in the mountains with the PKK. But this all fell apart when Erdogan saw that he was losing his grip on power. The pro-Kurdish HDP, the People's Democratic Party, won 13% of the votes in June last year. So the AKP couldn't gain a majority. Erdogan knocked over the negotiation table uh, and declared war on the Kurds. And the war started in July uh, against Kurdish cities and Kurdish towns. There are many towns in the southeast of Turkey, uh, North Kurdistan, that have been under curfew for over four months. Like 24 hour curfews, people can't go out uh, to get food or water or anything. They're essentially stranded. There are more than 100,000 state forces in action in Kurdistan. Over a million people have been affected. According to human rights organizations, over 500 civilians have been killed. We believe more than that have been killed. The Turkish state is saying everyone that they kill is a terrorist. They've killed two unborn babies, a three-month-old baby, 86-year-old men and women. Only last month in Jizre, the Kurdish district, they burned and executed 178 people across three basements. Who's the terrorist? Turkistan! Who's the murderer? Turkistan! Who's the killer? Turkistan! Who kills babies? Turkistan! Who kills women? Turkistan! Who supports ISIS? Turkistan! Who's the killer? The people set up barricades and they dug trenches to resist young Kurds especially, took up arms, but the state continues using tanks, heavy artillery, bombing civilian areas. The Kurdish Red Crescent has just started a campaign to be able to supply food to them and it's not easy for any NGO to go there. There are no um, organizations helping, no NGOs. Firstly, Turkey restricted them uh, from doing so, but also it's a matter of life and death there. They can't enter, it's too risky. So, there's people's assemblies that have formed in these areas who take risks to supply food and survival supplies. And we are now trying to raise funds to be able to supply these basic survival needs to the people that are stranded for over four months. Kurds want peace! Kurds want justice! 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 Another aspect of it is obviously the war in Syria. The Kurdish forces are the most successful force in the Middle East fighting ISIS and that's why PG, the People's Protection Union, they have been defending uh, uh, the Rojava of Kurdistan which is north of Syria and the Turkish state is not happy about the kind of autonomy the Kurdish people have gained. It was a genuinely revolutionary situation. I mean, I've never really been in the middle of uh, something quite like it because you have a whole society which is completely transforming itself. Turkish state basically does not know what to do about the situation, has come to, uh, wanted to enter into Syria and attack the Kurdish people instead of attacking ISIS. The system that's trying to be built up, the direct democracy, the local assemblies that are trying to be built, uh, created in northern Kurdistan are suffering because the war is still ongoing within the towns and cities. And this is what the Turkish state doesn't want. It doesn't want a democratic society. There was a revolution in Syria, and people forget this. Um, you know, what happened in Rojava is one aspect of that revolution. But in the predominantly Arab regions as well, 
There was a huge outpouring of social creativity, the creation of horizontal organizations, local newspapers, women's centers, directly democratic assemblies, hundreds of which still exist in Syria. The revolution became militarized. When that happened, the jihadists and the right-wing factions really came to the fore. Alerta! Alerta! Antifascista! Alerta! Alerta! Antifascista! Alerta! Alerta! Antifascista! Alerta! Alerta! Antifascista! There's many ISIS troops going through Turkey's border freely. This is a fact. Turkish state allowing free movement for ISIS as a terrorist group. International governments have supported in the past and in this war, all sides, depending on who is useful at which point. They created the ground for an organization like ISIS to flower in the Middle East, beginning with the Iraq invasion. And this continued with Syria. In the beginning of the Syrian war, they tried to topple Assad. They used all kinds of jihadist reactionary forces against the Assad regime, which is not a progressive regime itself. Assad hasn't fallen, so governments have been pushed into supporting progressive forces like the Kurdish forces. However, they still support Turkey and are turning a blind eye to Turkey's crimes against the Kurds. Turkey is still bombing the Kurds in Syria. I'm just standing here today as a, a British dad who's, who lost his son last year. He died uh, fighting ISIS in Rojava. He always wanted to support the Kurds and he even joined the military with a mind to supporting them in due course. But the British government weren't prepared to send any forces when he wanted to go um, and still they don't. So he got, he got fed up and left the Marines the Royal Marines and uh, went off by himself to join the fight. They're killing about seven ISIS with the RAF over the last six months, which hasn't done very much. And then people here who have fought and suffered for nearly a year, they arrest them as common criminals when they return. We shall fight! We shall win! Viva, viva Kurdistan! The refugee crisis has been huge and this is because of the Turkish state and not using the humanitarian aid that they're gaining from the uh, European states because if there was an adequate, suitable accommodation and services to the refugees, we wouldn't have so many refugees coming over. For years and years, the Kurdish language has been banned. Kurdish people have lost their uh, mother tongue language, uh, which is a human rights violation internationally. What we want is uh, autonomy for Kurdistan within Turkey and across the Middle East, and a democratic state and nation for all of Turkey. Stopping war on Kurds means taking away one of the reasons for war in the Middle East in general. We've had amazing solidarity from hundreds of non-Kurdish organizations in Britain to organize this demo itself. So what people can do is join the movement, go to stopwaroncurds.org. Organize, organize yourself, speak for the Kurdish people, support the Kurdish people, what do they want? Make events, collaborate. Boycott Turkish tourism, boycott products made in Turkey. Speak to MPs, speak to your representative about the Kurdish issue. Don't be silent about it. And we need that voice of the people to unite with the Kurdish people. Once upon a time! Stop!